your shape. Well, I have 50 right now. But if I um, sell my old skis to Stacy, I'll have 150. Hi, DJ. Hi, Mr. Fernelli. DJ. Hi. You know, you're just in time to join us, won't you? No, no, thanks. See you later. How do you like that? I like what? Well, DJ, the way he just took off like that. Well, knowing DJ, he probably wants you to come to him. Maybe. Honey, uh, I got some bad news. The ski club is a maybe, but new skis are definitely out. Dad, why? Well, Ryan, you know, I made a decision. We are going to have to try to live on the money that I bring home from this job. Well, Dad, that's practically nothing. Exactly. What was she doing at Newark Airport, and why did she buy those clothes? Francis, are you sure it was genuine? Positive. Yes, because she was identified by a woman at one of the shops by her picture. You should have seen the outfit they had that store. She doesn't show up when she's supposed to show up, and then I find out she's been on this coast for two days, and she's bought some strange clothes. I mean, what does it mean? Well, it's got to be a logical explanation. Well, I'd like to know what the explanation is. I mean, it's all, it's completely against Jillian's character to do something like this. Could someone please explain it to me? Frank, I just remembered. Something Jillian said when she called me. What? Well, she said she kind of liked the idea of being someone else for a while. Riverside Hospital. The doc says that they've got some specialists there. They can help you, Sarah Jane. I know I should want to get my memory back, and I know that I shouldn't be afraid, but... Are you? Hey. No one is going to hurt you. I won't let them. Do you believe me? Yeah, I believe you. Good. So I'm going to go and take the train into New York. be sure of the exact words. Far what in the world could you have meant by that? What do you think, Frank? I don't know what to think. I have no idea. Wait a second. What is it that she said to you when she called? Something about a serious matter she wanted to discuss? It's about change, Frank. When I get home, there's going to be a lot of things changed. Can you remember anything else she said? I thought everything was fine. Oh, and I'm sure it is. I probably heard Jillian wrong in Mama, the first place. Mama, you wouldn't make a mistake like that. All right, Maggie, I think we've all spent enough time in idle speculation here. I think now. you're right, Ma. I really do. We're going to get all this stuff straightened out when Jill gets home. Right. The first thing I have to do is concentrate on finding her. Oh, of course, that's the most important. But where do we look? Oh, we're going to retrace her steps from the moment she left New York. The very first thing I want to find out is why she didn't go to Barbados. Well, I can't help you out there, but I know where she went when she left New York. She went to check on the legacy that your father had inherited. I mean, what legacy, Ma? Francis, I just assumed you knew all about this. <laughs> we had an old friend named Meg Smith. She passed on and she put your father in her will. Well, Jillian volunteered on her way to Barbados to stop off in Tennessee and check out it Jill for us. Jill went to Tennessee. Tennessee, what? 
Do you have names? Do you have numbers of these people? Where... Well, I, well, there's a lawyer named Mr. Davis and Meg's sister, Mrs. Monroe. Yes, of course, your father must have the numbers. Good. I don't think I'll call. I think I'll just go right down there. I'm going to fly down there and talk to him. Frank, oh. you're in the middle of a campaign. You can't go back. I don't back. care about the campaign. I care about my oh, wife. Frank, I want my Frank, wife back Frank, here. would everyone just quiet down for just a moment? Moment, please. Francis, there's no point in anyone going to France. It's just sense. Your father has already spoken to the lawyer and Meg's sister, and they assured him that Jenny had been there, taken care of the business, and left. Then why did Jillian go to San Francisco? Well, if Jillian wanted to be somebody else, doesn't it make sense that she'd go someplace else? Why are you so afraid of me going to Riverside Hospital? I'm not. That's not what I'm seeing in your eyes right now. All right, I am. I don't know why. I really don't know why. I don't even know who I am. You're Sarah Jane. Right. <laughs> and you're Dakota. That doesn't tell me very much, does it? No, but it's a good start, I think. Things could be a lot worse. Yeah, I guess they could. It's just that I feel like... <laughs> what is that? What, that music? Yeah. That's Denny. From Denny's Seaside? Yeah. Denny used to play in Harry James's band way back when. <laughs> well, whatever he had back then, he still has. You like that, huh? Yeah. Does he, um, does he play like that a lot? No. Only when things get real slow down at the restaurant. And do uh, things get slow a lot? Well, actually... Yeah, I guess they do lately. Good. I knew there was something I liked about this place. Oh, is that it? Old Denny? Huh? No. I don't know. I just feel... I feel at home here. I feel... I feel safe. From what? Look, Dakota, I don't want you to think that I'm a coward, okay? That's what Laureline told you about your marriage, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah, it is, okay? She told me some bad things, okay? Maybe I don't want to remember them. You know that you don't mean that. <laughs> I know one thing. I know I'm happy here. I don't even know why. I don't even know how, but... I'm really sure of that. And that is something, isn't it? Dad, I, I don't think I understand. Well, remember, I took this job. The idea was to get back to my roots, right? Right, but, but I thought you accomplished that. Well, I sort of thought so, too, until yesterday when I went to the bank with Raphael during our lunch break. What happened? Raphael deposited most of his check to cover bills, and as usual, I, uh, I cashed my pocket money. Oh, so that what's, that's what made you decide to put a big damper on our budget. Well, I thought of it before, but that's what convinced me, yeah. Now, you don't know what it's like to scramble for a living. I do, or at least I did. Don't you think that if I'm going to write a book about Raphael and people like him, I should at least try to live under some of the conditions they have to live under? Well, I never thought about it that way. Now, it could be hard on you. Are you willing to go along with me? Yeah. I mean, I can do without new skis. After all, you're going to have to do without Gloria Tavsky. What? Well, Dad, you can't afford her. I mean, let's face it, from now on, you're going to have to be shopping around for some ladies with less expensive taste. Well, we're not going to take that tray up to the lab. Betty, I have to. I've got stacks of transcripts to read. You can't work 24 hours a day. 
<laughs> Your work is going to suffer. Not to mention your health. Ms. Sherman, you may be the only one in this whole hospital, including me, who's ever going to give me a break. I better take it. Don't tell me. Roger's on your case again about cost overruns. <laughs> Not again. Still. Now he's threatening to pull the plug on the whole project. You're kidding. No. Uh, he knew how expensive this drug was going to be to develop. I told him and the rest of the board when I made the original request for funding. Well, don't they weigh cost against potential gains? Yeah, in theory, but uh, the board is mainly laymen. They look at the bottom line. We know where Roger's priorities are. He is the bottom line. Doesn't he understand that this research can save a lot of lives? He's a doctor, Betty. He understands. He just doesn't give a damn. He never has, and he never will. Click or treat. Well, uh, Dr. Coleridge, we were just talking about you. <laughs> Uncle Pat, this is a joke. You're supposed to laugh at me, remember? <laughs> Sorry. Where Roger Coleridge is concerned, I don't have a sense of humor. Well, in that case, why don't you uh, spend the remainder of your borrowed lab time trying to cook one up in a Petri dish? Now, if I could just make you disappear, Jack, it would really be a red letter day. I realize Halloween is your own personal uh, holiday, Roger, but I have something to discuss with you, sure. So do I. But I'm afraid hospital business comes before you do, Fenella. Well, well. My, how considerate of Pat to buy me dinner. You know, if I didn't know better, I'd, I'd think he was trying to buy my favor. What about the hospital business you wanted to discuss? Well, there wasn't any. I lied. But it's a small price to pay to get rid of Finelli for a while. Wouldn't you say? Looks like you got a clear path. Yeah. Sure do you. I'll see you back at the ranch, partner. This must be some book. Um, Ryan, would you please just stop doing that? Sorry. So, what's up? Why this sudden interest in reading all of a sudden? Like, it's no big deal. All right, so I'm really not in the mood to hear your excitement. What's wrong? You want to see what's wrong? It's this wonderful, handy-dandy book. A Guide to Colleges. A manual. TJ, are you serious? Yeah, well, I was thinking about all this college stuff. What do you mean, was? Um, you see, in this wonderful book, it tells you that you need money to go to college. Of course, I don't have any money. Well, TJ, there are grants and scholarships. Yes, but do you honestly think, Ryan, that they're going to give a grant or a scholarship to somebody who doesn't even have a high school diploma? No. Wait a minute, you forgot your book. No, should I keep it? I, uh, I got enough door stops. That's right. Roger's wrong, like always. Now, I'd like to get back to my own research, if you don't mind. Please, if I hear the word budget one more time, I'm going to scream. How about the words cheap date? Finelli, are you asking me out again? Yeah, but, but only as an experiment. In what? Entertaining within the limits of my paycheck. Oh, I see. You were wondering if we poor peasants ever have any fun. Do you? Yes. On occasion, we people who work for a living have been known to have a good time. You do? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Good. Eight o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute, Finelli. You tricked me. Yeah. Do you mind? Not really. Jillian actually said that she'd like to be somebody else for a while. That doesn't sound like your daughter. She's never been one to run away from problems. 
Maeve, I know that. But all these things she seems to be doing, when are we going to have some answers? Here's a briefing papers Manny sent over. Frank, Frank, the press conference is in less than two hours. I know. Your election is in less than I know five that, Manny. Yeah, I do. I know that. I am worried about her, too, you know. I'm worried about what she's going to think when she gets back and finds out that you lost the election because you were too busy worrying about her. Maggie, Jill is missing. She could be hurt. She could Listen, be... Listen, uh... she said that she might not be back until after the election. Yeah, but she changed her mind. She told me she was going to be home last night. Well, she obviously changed her mind again. Yeah. But why? I don't know. I don't know. I wish I could say something that would explain everything, the, the strange clothes, the weird phone calls, but if it were anybody else... If it were anybody else, right, why? What are you thinking now? You're thinking that uh, Roger's right, that uh, Jill's coming home just to break up with no. me? Is that what you're thinking? No, I'm hmm? not thinking that. I refuse to believe that, neither should you. No matter what it looks like. You've just got to concentrate on the election right now, Frank. And whatever you do, don't think about what Roger said. Hi. Siobhan. Oh, hi. How are you? Hi. Surprise! Here we are. Two. Two. It's back here. So we just Sue. couldn't stay away. And even though the honeymoon was terrific. Yes, except for one thing. Yes, we missed Sean terribly. I might have known. Well, when I recover from the shock, can I get the two of you something to drink? Oh, uh, yeah. yes, like thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can't believe it. And you it. ladies can, uh, can fill me in on all the latest news. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that's good. All right, yeah. we'll do that. Hi. He must come. Siobhan, when did you get back? Just now. Uh, Frank, listen, I've got some good news and some bad news. Why? What's it about? Jill? Yeah. Well, we managed to confirm that she is indeed staying at this hotel in San Francisco. That's the good news. Bad news? <laughs> For some reason, she's using an assumed name. Yeah? Nothing like hot jazz on a cold night. Is it supposed to make a person sad? Only in a good way. How can you tell? Sarah Jane, don't do this to yourself. No guy can be worth that. Yeah, maybe. There's no maybe about it. Any guy that would hurt you has to be a fool. Forget him. I thought I already had. They've got people at Riverside Hospital who can help you. Yeah, I suppose they can. Listen to me. I don't want you to worry about a thing, do you understand? I'm right here. And there's nothing to be afraid of. Coming soon on Ryan's Hope. As Jill struggles to remember the past, she finds herself falling for Dakota. You really like him, don't you? I liked him from the first moment I opened my eyes and I saw his face. Big Bad Wolf doesn't talk much, does he? Big Bad Wolves eat curious little girls for breakfast. He's a man on the run from the law whose mysterious past threatens to destroy the Ryans. Who's that guy? I don't know. I don't know why he was staring at me like that. Tonight at 8, 7 Central, it's Gold Girls and Gadgets when James Bond attempts to protect Fort Knox against Goldfinger, an ABC movie special. Then martial arts weapons. Your kids may be sending away for mail order mayhem on 2020. How do children cope when both their parents work? This is David Hartman. Tomorrow morning, children tell us the benefits and drawbacks of having both parents at work when they come home from school. Also, Priscilla Presley on Good Morning America.
Will the pressure of life on the run tear Stacy and Jack apart? Stay tuned for Loving next.